is Lee here from the Abolitious Teacher, and today I'm going to show you how to organize your Google Classroom for second grade. Now, I'm specifically talking about organizing the classroom topics and ideas, um, assignments, and things like that for second grade so that your second graders can easily know what they need to do that day or that week, depending on how you assign your assignments, and what um, under what topic they will be. So on my screen here, you can see is my Google Classroom. This is a mock Google Classroom, obviously. So there's not very many students in there. Um, so let's open it up. Here's your stream. Obviously, this is where you're going to see new assignments pop up. Students can type something. You can add questions here. Um, but let's specifically go into classwork because that's what we're looking at today. Here you can see are my topics. Now I see this question a lot. How should I organize my Google Classroom? Should I create a Google Classroom for each area that I teach? Should I create a Google Classroom um, you know, for each block? There's a lot of questions about that. Normally in second grade, we don't uh, team teach. So you're usually self-contained. Um, so today I'm going to speak to that, um, but if you are not self-contained, you might want to do this a little differently. If you are not self-contained and you actually have like a A, B class or you're teaching, you know, rotations of students, you may want to actually create a Google Classroom for each of those students, um, for each of those groups of students. It's up to you. Um, it's a little bit more work because you're going to have to post in each of the classrooms, but it's how you want to organize it. So this, the way I have this set up is for a self-contained second grade classroom. Over here, we have our topics. Now, topics can really be anything you want, but in a second grade classroom, I like to organize the topics by subject. So here you can see we have today's assignment as a subject, reading, grammar and writing, math, science and social studies. Now you may need to add some other things like if you have, um, if you're also pushing out in your own Google Classroom art, music, PE, you might wanna add those in. Um, obviously I do not have those. So the key here is that the topics are, are what our subjects are. And within those topics, I'm going to be creating our assignments. Now. What makes this a little easier and organized for second grade is this today's assignment topic, okay? When our students first log in, they see all these assignments and it can be overwhelming. Obviously, I don't have everything assigned in here, but this can be very overwhelming. The today's assignment topic allows me to easily pull in activities that I would like for my students to work on that day. Like if I have a reading for them to do, I can easily pull it up. And then when they actually click into today's assignments, they are only looking at the assignments that are due today. Okay. When I'm done with those assignments or if students or that time has passed for students to do those, I can move them back down to where they are. So here I'm moving my math back down. Come on, math. Da, 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 da. There we go. Moving my math practice down, I'm gonna remove my reading back down. So the assignment is still there, obviously. We don't wanna delete it completely because we don't want our students to, um, we don't wanna delete the assignment, um, but it's no longer in the today's assignment. So it's still active, but when they click today's assignments, now um, they're only gonna see what the assignment is for that day instead of things. So this works great if you are repeating an assignment. So like if you have a choice board that you want students to work off of, especially in math or in reading, where maybe they're doing a you know independent reading study and you want them to do a choice activity when they're done. Um, this is great because you can always copy and drag that assignment up for when it is an activity for them and drag it back down when you're done with it and not have to worry about recreating the assignment each time or reassigning the choice board every time that they need to do the assignment. Um, in addition to help make this a little easier for second graders to navigate, I've added emojis to the topics. So to do that was super easy. 
So for example, let's say I wanted to create a new topic and I wanted to call it, um, you know, uh, let's say uh, art, art. Okay. So in my art, there we go. Forgot to put the emoji in there. I want to add an art emoji. So on my computer, I can right click and add an emoji and I can search for an emoji that makes sense. I know not everybody has that access. Um, I'm on a PC and this works for me, but I know that some people who have Macs and some people who have PCs who are not who do not have this feature enabled. And honestly, I'm not sure why I have it. I'm sh I'm sure it has something to do with my Windows because here you can see it's there's the little Windows sign. So it must be that I'm using a specific Windows that enables it. But I'm able to easily right click and do that. If you, for some reason, find that when you right click in a space where you can type and the emoji option doesn't come up, you can always use a website called getemoji.com. It's literally a copy and paste. You can search. We can search art. And let's see. We can copy or click copy. Go back our page and paste and it's the same emoji as I have before. So there you can see is an emoji in the front of my topic so that students know like visually what this word is because we know in second grade um, our students can read um, well, most of them but this maybe they're not the most proficient reader and maybe they're not used to seeing these type of academic words. This makes it a little easier to navigate. So here for reading, you can see I have a, um, for reading, I have a, a stack of books for grammar and writing. I have a hand that's writing. For math, I have that plus sign. And for science, we have a microscope. For social studies, we have the globe. Um, and now for art, we have that. Now, um, There we go. I'm going to delete this so I don't actually need this in my classroom. So that's how you can add emojis. So like I said, the best way to organize your Google Classroom for your second grade is very simple. Keep it streamlined. Use your topics as your subjects. Within your subjects, you'll add your assignments and then drag and pull your assignments into today's assignments. Um, on the daily so that you can actually go in and assign things for the week and then just pull in daily what you want them to do. Now, if you're working in a classroom where maybe things are a little more free-flowing, especially if you're doing virtual learning, um, you may want, instead of today's assignments, you may want to do this week's assignments and just pull in the assignments for that week. Um, just remember that that's going to be a lot of assignments them to look at and the idea is that in today's assignments they can just click and only focus in on what needs to be completed that day and you can always remove the assignment from that day and still have it available for them to work on in the subject area but now instead of them having to click and go through um, and look to see when everything is due they're easily able to see um, their assignments that they need to do today. All right, guys, like, I hope that this was helpful for you. Um, you can always uh, ask questions if you have questions, and I will talk to you later. Bye.